Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Laura Noland here in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii for PTC 20. Joining me now is Dean Nelson, Strategic Advisor for Dean Nelson, Inc. Welcome, Dean. Thanks for having me. So, Dean, you've been an industry expert for more than 30 years. You left Uber last year. So what are you up to now? Uh, so I, I spent 30 years in the industry. I, I literally started on my 21st birthday uh, and I left on my 51st. So I wanted to go into a different chapter because I'd done eBay and PayPal and Sun Microsystems and Uber and a bunch of things and, and had a really good time building infrastructure all over the world. But now I wanted to be able to advise on trends. And so four things that I'm actually working on within my consulting firm right now is uh, edge computing. That's huge. The uh, data tsunami that's coming is going to really surprise people. Um, edge computing also. So if you look at um, the amount of compute required at the edge, it's going to be huge. Digital labor is another one. We're going to be able to download digital employees. So wow. just think about that, like the app store, I can select an employee, a digital colleague, and they will start to do all the automated work for me. It's already built. Um, data centers themselves, so software defined data center is a huge one. And then the best topic, the sexiest topic is FinOps. <laughs> yeah, financials, you know. But anyways, <laughs> there is a taxonomy here that really is a game changer with how people approach uh, investments when it comes to infrastructure and how they can optimize and win. Wonderful. You mentioned software defined networking. So I want to ask you a question about uh, a recent article that you were quoted in Interglobix magazine saying as quote, bottom line, data centers need to drive options for customers that go against the last two decades of thinking. Mm -hmm. Software defined is the future. So how do you define a software defined data center of the future? So software defined data center has been around since 2009. So the simple, the simple Layman's term is it's compute, storage, and networking that's orchestrated with software, mm -hmm. meaning uh, that drove virtualization and increased utilization across the board. But the problem is that it's missing an element. So compute, storage, networking, and facilities. So if you look at the data centers underneath, mm -hmm. they have not done the same optimizations that have happened in the shared platforms above. So software-defined data center requires software-defined power for the facilities element, software-defined cooling, and local energy storage. To give you an example of that one, if I've got a megawatt of capacity, um, I have to build another megawatt of capacity for redundancy, and then I've got swing capacity as well. Well, that first megawatt, they usually use on average 50% of it. So theoretically, I have 75% of the capacity that's never used in the year. And then outages in data centers happen maybe less than 1% of the year, and they don't impact everything. So you have all this stranded capacity. What if you could take that capacity and be able to use it for workload? That means that you could double the amount of capacity you can consume or sell with no additional capital investment. We have, wow. to, we have to be able to enable software to take control of facilities that will enable those large shared platforms mm -hmm. to include that facility element in. Then dynamically, every data center on the planet will get more efficient. And you are the linchpin pulling all this together uh, with the companies and the partners that, that are making this happen. Yeah, the, import, the important part for me is that um, the trend here is around software-defined data center. Everyone's been talking about it for a decade, but we haven't done anything real when it comes down into the facilities. So I'm championing this because I care very much about the efficiency of our industry. I also know that there is a race to zero right now, stranded capacity, and all these colos and everybody else are trying to figure out how to lower the cost per kilowatt. They're reaching the bottom, the floor, because you invest this one, unless you compromise redundancy and have less redundancy, you're not going to be able to lower it further. So this suddenly opens up where they can increase their margin and they can have more capacity and they can increase their resiliency. Well, as we wrap up, what is next for the man and the brand? I know you're with Infrastructure Maces leading the charge there and then also uh, Dean Nelson, Inc. Uh, for me, I'm going to continue working on these pieces. Um, I do want to shout out one thing to the industry, though, uh, from a trend. Every one of us should be focusing on making every transaction on the Internet green. Every one of us are making decisions to have that happen. And so kudos to Microsoft with what they just did. They put out their, they're going to be carbon negative by 2030, and then they're going to be repaying all of their carbon back by 2050 since 1975. The bar's just been set. Every company out there, <laughs> you need to be as good as Microsoft. Nice work, Satya and team. You heard it here first. All right, Dean, thank you. Where can folks learn more about uh, you and, and your exciting work? Uh, they can email me at innovate at deannelson.com or just go to deannelson.com. Thank you, Dean, for joining us. We appreciate it. And thank you, viewers, for joining us on JSA TV and JSA Podcast. Happy networking.